Most of us try to control our emotions when things get hard. We push them down. We avoid them. We bottle them up. Because somewhere along the way, we were told that being strong means not feeling things too deeply. But here's what's surprising. Trying to shut down emotions doesn't make us stronger. It makes it harder to understand ourselves. Emotion suppression isn't strength. It's like turning off the warning lights on your dashboard. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean the engine isn't overheating. So what should we be doing instead? We need to understand emotions, not suppress them. And in this video, I'll break down how emotions really work, the neuroscience of regulation, why understanding emotions changes everything in mental health, and practical strategies you can start using today. I'm Dr. Sunil Regev, psychiatrist and educator, and I have a strong focus on in integrating neuroscience and psychotherapy. Together with my psychologist colleague, we've developed courses on psychological therapies, especially those that build emotional regulation. I've taught more than 10,000 psychiatrists and mental health professionals and created courses with over 100,000 hours of active learning. In this video, I'll show you why understanding emotions, not controlling them, is one of the most important clinical skills we can learn. So firstly, let's start off with what are emotions? Here's the first shift. Emotions are not problems, they're signals. They're your brain's way of saying something important is happening. Like hunger tells you to eat. Emotions tell you something needs your attention. Anger, often a boundary crossed. Sadness, a loss or need for a connection. Anxiety, a signal of uncertainty or lack of safety. When we suppress these signals, we lose the ability to respond meaningfully. Children show us how it's done. They don't hide their emotions, they reach out, crying, clinging, calling for help. That's emotional regulation in action. But here's the twist. We start suppressing emotions when the world stops responding. That's not resilience, it's survival. As adults, we still carry unmet needs. These needs don't disappear. They surface as arousal and emotion. And often we don't even realize it because we operate from a default emotional language shaped by our early experiences. That's the real challenge, developing a new emotional vocabulary. One that helps us communicate with ourselves and others. Because we can't meet our needs by making others do things for us. But we can express those needs, explore them, and invite others into a shared space of mutual understanding. So moving from emotions to emotional regulation, what is regulation? Real regulation isn't about squashing emotions. It's about noticing what you feel, understanding the trigger, and then choosing a helpful response. James Gross, the psychologist, describes five points of intervention. One, situation selection, avoid the trigger. Two, situation modification, change the environment. Three, attentional deployment, shift your focus. Four, cognitive reappraisal, change how you see it. And five, response modulation, calm your brain and body. Notice one thing, only one of those is about control. The rest, they're about understanding and creating options. So what's happening in the brain? Emotional signals arise from subcortical areas, amygdala, hypothalamus, insula. They're fast, automatic, and primal. Regulation happens in the prefrontal cortex, top-down modulation. You feel the emotion, then your brain decides what to do with it. Here's an analogy. Think of it like a rider, the prefrontal cortex trying to guide the horse, which is the emotional circuits. You can't fight it head on, but you can understand where it wants to go and guide it more effectively. When emotions overwhelm the rider through trauma, stress, or illness, regulation breaks down. But here's the magic. Emotion and cognition are partners. We assign words to emotional signals. That's how we give them meaning. That's how a child goes from feeling overwhelmed to saying, I'm sad. This happens through caregiver interactions. When a parent says, I see you're upset, are you scared? That naming process wires the brain for emotional insight. Adults, sometimes we lack this language. We call everything stress, but vague language is equal to vague solutions. 
Understanding begins when we move from feeling to naming. When we learn to ask, what am I feeling? What do I need? What am I trying to express? It's here that we begin to shift from reaction to response. So let's bring this to psychiatry. Whether it's depression, anxiety, PTSD, or borderline personality disorder, emotional dysregulation is at the core. But here's the paradox. We treat cognition. We treat behavior. But often, we ignore the emotion. We try to improve cognition and behavior. But there's no such thing as improving emotions. Emotions are not symptoms to remove. They're signals waiting to be understood. Trauma, that's not just fear. It's an unmet need for safety. Depression, often a collapsed state where signals were sent and ignored for too long. So treatment should be about giving space for those emotions to be seen and then integrated. So how do we regulate better? And what actually works? First, psychotherapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy helps with reappraisal. Dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT, teaches distress tolerance and emotional naming. Two, mindfulness and exercise. This helps reset the nervous system and improves prefrontal function. Third, medication. In some cases, when emotions overwhelm cognition, medications help restore that balance. Whether it's SSRIs or mood stabilizers or even beta blockers for performance anxiety. Fourth, social support. Interpersonal emotional regulation is real. A friend, for example, who listens actually can change your nervous system. And sixth, the awareness of our affect systems. These were described by Pangsep. You see, our emotional circuits are evolutionary wired. Seeking fear, rage, care, lust, panic, grief. When we don't understand which circuit is activated, we mislabel the emotion. But when we know what system we're in, we can respond differently. So let me summarize all of this for you. Here's the key takeaway. Emotions aren't your enemy. They're not a weakness. They're not something to be conquered. They're your brain's way of guiding you towards what matters. The goal isn't to suppress them. It's to understand them, name them, and then respond appropriately. That's emotional regulation. And if you're a clinician, check out the Academy by Psych Scene, where we teach the neuroscience that doesn't find its way into psychiatry training. If this resonated with you and you think it can help someone you know, then share it with them. Hit the like and subscribe button to stay in touch with all our future releases. I'm Dr. Sunil Reggae from Psychiatry Simplified. Until the next video, stay curious. Bye-bye.